to the TalkLine okay. Network. TalkLine Network Radio, America's longest-running Jewish broadcast network, the voice of the Jewish community. <laughs> You're listening to Talk Line with Zev Brenner, America's premier Jewish broadcast on the air since 1981. And now, here's your host. Shavuot Tov Lekol Am Yisrael. This is Elia Hawila, who's uh, been called the Lebanese Hassan. Um, just want to let everybody know I was scheduled to be on with Zev Brenner tonight to take questions and answers about my Jewish status. Um, and I want to let everybody know that I am a full fledged Jew with my mother and my grandmother being Jewish. And I, I but I had to go through a Giyur Lahumra nevertheless. Um, there's a video going on around besmirching my reputation. And I do plan to come on the air with Zev Brenner to discuss this in greater detail at a future date. But for the time being, I am respecting my wife's uh, wish, who uh, requested that I do not appear tonight with Zev to engage in back and forth dialogue with listeners. So I'm deferring to her wish, to her wishes, and I, I unfortunately won't be able to address them on this program tonight. However, my rabbi, Avraham Reich, the rav of Kehilat Hatzalat Israel, was part of my Giyur Lahumra and helped guide me through this difficult time and you know, all my, in my, you know, in my life is gracious enough to be on the radio tonight with Zev Brenner, answering questions and describing in detail what I've gone through and how my status got confirmed. So please accept my apologies for not being able to join the conversation tonight, but I do look forward to doing so at a later time and in a later date. Thank you all for understanding and Shavuot Tov again. Thank you, that's Aliyah Hawila, the Lebanese Hassan. We v- welcome, very much appreciate that Rav Avram Reich, the Rav Kahilas Hatzolos Yisrael, which he founded approximately 40 years ago when the Iron Curtain fell. He basically has been helping Russian families in the United States, giving them an education in Yiddishkeit and Philos, and put children in yeshivas, and has given Shuri Torah and Bristol and the wedding and Bar Mitzvahs and Pesach Sadarm. Over 500 families have been benefited by him. He's the author of numerous Savarm, including Leif Dar Kitzer, Chovas Halavavos. Rav Avram Reich, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you for uh, having me on. Uh, thank you. Observe. So I know that uh, you have been worked with Aliyah Hawila and helped in this conversion process. First of all, when did you first come in contact with him? Uh, it's most probably a, approximately a year ago or maybe a little more. I can't say exactly, but it's approximately a year ago. Okay. Maybe, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. So that was that was before his wedding? No, that was after his wedding. Wedding. So as you heard that he married a Syrian Jewish young lady, it turned out after a wedding where they discovered that he wasn't Jewish. They contacted his father in Lebanon. And the, they were apart since that took place. So he now has gone through a conversion in the Hummer, and we'll talk about what that means in just a moment. But uh, he has stated, as we just heard, that his mother is Jewish, his grandmother is Jewish. Have you verified that? Um, we, you have to understand the basis of halacha on a, what is considered a Jew or not. Uh, my parents came from the Holocaust. They had no uh, documents stating they were Jews. But the uh, the accepted method of a person knowing whether he's Jewish or not is from his father and mother. Uh, that's how we know we're Jewish from generation to generation. And um, on that basis, uh, I uh, contacted his mother. She lives in Texas. And uh, speaking to her, Messiah Lefitumah. Messiah Lefitumah means that uh, a, a, a dying who is trying to verify a certain halakha is not allowed to re- rely on a person who's non-Jewish. And since I didn't know her status, so he had to speak around, it's called Messiah Lefitumah, speaking around and around and her himself coming and uh, explaining certain uh, facts. So she told me that uh, from when he was nine years old, he had always had this urge of being Jewish. And she told me that um, she knew from her mother and her, that they were Jewish and her mother's grandmother, that was, mother's mother was also Jewish. I asked her to, uh, if she could uh, make a statement and have it notarized, so she did it. And 
We also had his grandmother who still lives in Lebanon to also uh, uh, write a document stating that they're Jewish. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> but this is only just small part of the story of Elia and his wife. Let me just give you a little background how I got involved with this. Uh, our, our congregation, uh, which was on 44th Street between 9th and 10th, is across the street from the, uh, the Briderheim, it's called a, a home by Hamaspik, everybody knows the wonderful work that they do. They have a building there and they have uh, some elderly adults that are unable to uh, attend their own needs and they hire uh, people, sometimes couples, to stay with these people for Shabbos, giving them a, a warm uh, feeling that we care and helping them with all their needs. So uh, um, Elia and his wife were, uh, were, were chosen to uh, service this, uh, this home across the street from us, which in itself shows that they're people of compassion. Um, I must speak as a very, very professional chashiva maizid, which will only hire people which they feel are compassionate. Uh, and uh, that itself shows that we're talking about people that have morals and care and good midos and good character. Being that he was across the street from us, he came to Daven by us. And he came, he participated in the shiurim, which I had given. Now, being a Rav already for Kanei Nahar, B'lai Nahara, the Nehav Ashram over 40 years, I'm constantly giving shiurim. I can have that feeling when I give a shir, I know who is concentrating to what I'm saying. Who am I, who is it that I'm, I'm affecting? Who am I ca contacting with inside the machshava in the heart? You know, the people that just goes in one ear, goes out the other ear. But there's certain people that when you talk, you see the expression on their face that they're, they're, they're accepting what you're saying and they're being elevated with your divrei Torah. He was one of these people that um, I was very impressed with him, with his seriousness. First of all, how he davened uh, and uh, his participation in the shiurim and how we uh, reacted to the shiurim. And, um, and then I didn't see him anymore. But after he, he was for a while coming to us. And afterward, afterwards, uh, we lost contact. Um, and then I heard about this whole story, how um, uh, a certain community was spreading uh, stories about him, that he's a guy and that he's, he fooled everybody and that he lied to people. And I was very surprised because usually I don't get fooled because I'm dealing with this so many years. I'm not a young man anyway, as you can see on the picture. Uh, I, I was, I was, it was, didn't sound right what they were doing to him. Hashem has had the Hashgach El that one of my Talmidim in our Kehillah met him and he brought him over to us. He brought him over to us, to our, to our shul. And um, I, I started to see who he was, you know, in a more you know, closer contact. And um, being, being in, the, in the work of Kirov for so many years, matter of fact, I've been in Kirov for the past uh, uh, for more than 50 years, 18, when I was 18 years old and I was in Yeshiva in Tells, uh, we, we, were, we were situated in Chicago, Illinois, and on, the, on the, one of the main uh, streets, main avenues, when anybody came in, to our yeshiva, the yeshiva would always send them to me. I had a certain knack of being able to, you know, have a connection with the people that want to become close to the Yiddish guy. That's when I started hearing his story that he told me about his mother and his grandmother. Now, from what I understand, he's he's been concentrating on his DNA, or uh, or on uh, oh, history. Yeah. When he started talking about his mother and room, was that after the whole controversy started? Yes, he, yeah, yes, yes. He never mentioned that before, only afterwards. I, 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 I just got to see him after the controversy. I don't know what he said before him. But uh, <clears throat> so, uh, you know, I do, I do giyurim, being that we're a kehillah of Russian, uh, Russian immigrants of, uh, or people from the prior, prior Soviet Union and, and Bechal Balichuva. A lot of shilas of 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 uh, yichus, uh, which arise, and being the rub of the killer, it was my responsibility to help these people uh, find out who they were, or if needed gear or a or gear to uh, uh, help them with that. And of course, I never have taken uh, any any monetary gains from this. In Shulchan Aruch, it says that well, you take you make uh, a dain that goes in a bezin for for gerus is not supposed to take any monetary gains. 
and I haven't, even though there are that they didn't which take, but that's called schar batala, because of the time that they're giving. Just like I'm a malamid, the teacher, a yeshiva, it's not supposed to take money for teaching third. It says, ma'ani b'chinam, afatem b'chinam, just like Hashem is b'chinam, teaches you, uh, teaches all of us b'chinam, gives us the Torah b'chinam, uh, those who disseminate and teach Torah are also to take it, so to um, be b'chinam, but the, the Allah has clearly states that if a person has to make a parnasa in his, uh, and in this time that he's giving out for, for, for whatever it needs it is, even on Gairus, he's allowed to take for his time. But I brought Hashem, we have Tanasa without that. I never ever took any, any, any monetary gains. Uh, but I, had to, I got a knack. I got a knack to uh, be able to see, you know, with, uh, who is sincere or not. Now, it's very interesting. In the Halakha, when in, you look at Hilchot Gairus in Yeridea, it doesn't mention anything of how to prove that he's a Yid. What it does say is that when the person comes to the Bezdin, the Bezdin has to have that feeling from the way he talks and way he, you know, the way he acts and his actions that he is sincere. There's no, there's no uh, magic. You know, people say, how do you know? How do you know? You don't know. How do you know he's sincere? Yeah, well, people that come to, first of all, people that will come to me so, for you. So you were I, impressed, I, impressed with Justin, because we're going to get to some fun a little bit. So you were impressed with how right. he conducted himself. Right. And you checked and you verified it. I, 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 verifying means that you using, said you got, you using got my sense. Uh -huh. I got, we got, we got we, the sense. It's not the letter. It's the sense of, of uh, confidence you see when you see a person. Now, when we took him to the Bezdin, the Bezdin heard about the whole roughness that this Kehillah is making against him. They heard about it and they knew about it. And when they made their investigation to people that know him and they spoke to him, they were convinced that he's sincere. That's let me, why they made the gift. Let me ask you a question. You ask me, why, oh. did, why did they have to? Yeah, good. No, they, 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 you mentioned that uh, he told you his mother is Jewish, his grandmother is yeah. and, and I interviewed him beforehand. And this is the question I've been getting all Shabbos. Yeah. So why didn't he mention this either to his bride or to others, including to myself, when this whole thing came about? He could have said his mother was Jewish, his grandmother was Jewish, in which case it would have perhaps stopped all the controversy and all the problems that he had. Well, uh, Reb Zav, you're asking a very good question. But when a person is being attacked by so many people, he gets confused and he says the wrong things. Now, he wasn't concentrating on the fact that he made investigations and he found out that his forefathers had Jewish names, which has, which is, has no for, uh, bearing on halacha. And lately he's been into the fact of DNA. So he, didn't, he did not get proper guidance of how to, how to tackle this. But a fact is a fact. And I want to tell you that, that according to Reb Moshe Feinstein, uh, and uh, Rabbi Vadi Yosef, if your mother and your grandmother tell you that you're Jewish, you don't even need a, a gear. And then why you go through a conversion process? Oh, so, oh, so that's a good question. The answer is because it's been um, uh, it's brought down also in the halacha. If you have around four generations that have not kept mitzvahs, that void forces us to make gear the chumrah. The fact that there was no Yiddishkeit in that family for so many generations. So for instance, let's say in Russia, when we had just one generation that was not from, and the mother, the grandmother was from, then it would be enough. But over here, in such a case, we always make, uh, we always make a year kalocha. Why he didn't answer that? Because he wasn't educated to know what to answer, but really it doesn't make a difference. The, the Metzius is that, um, I, I wanna tell your people, your, your listeners, that one of the mothers, she's an elderly woman, of the a mother, the mothers of the one of the prominent rabbanim in the Syrian community, called me, and she told me that she knows Elia for years, and she told me he's very, very sincere in his Yiddishkeit, and this is what she said. I'll quote her: "I wish that our boys, all the boys in our community, they would be as serious as him. He puts on tefillin every day. He davens three times a day. He learns Torah. I wish they would be as uh, particular in keeping mitzvahs as as." Uh, as him. But Zev, I want, to, I want to inject something over here, uh, being I'm on the line. One of the reasons I, I wanted to come on the line to you is because I want to bring out a point. And the point is like this. Contrary to popular belief, people think that when a person comes, wants to become a Jew, we have to push him away as much as we can, dissuade him from being a Jew, which is not true. Chazal teach us why were the Jewish nation dispersed all over the world? Kedei lasoiz geirim, to the geirim, to 
to give the, the goyim a chance to be misguided. Because when Hashem went around, he went around, he wanted to be fair that everybody should have a gear. He wanted to be fair. So each one said, I don't want it because of this, and I don't want it because of that. The only one that, wanted, that actually took it was Kal Yisro. But there were always, it's brought down in Chazal, brought down the Midrash, and there are always those that really wanted to become Geirim, but because most of the nation said no, Hashem skipped them. These Nishamas come out now uh, to become, uh, uh, become Geirim. Now, I want to explain to the, the oil like this. You know, I'm not a young man anymore, Baruch Hashem, and I have Shemesh from the Doilim from a prior generation. The mitzvah of helping a person to convert and to help a ger starts much, much before he becomes a, goes through the actual conversion. Where do we see this? We see this from Avram Avinu. Avram, Kodesh Baruch Hu was Makar of Avram Avinu from when he was three years old. Even though he was not this guy, he didn't have his bris until he was 100 years old. So we see that Hashem was Makar of Avram Avinu because he saw that his neshama, a mitzvah says, Lavove Nemelufanecha. Because he saw that he was sincere. <clears throat> now we have a we have a rule that we have to um, act in a life the way Hashem acts. Emulate Hashem. Mahu rachum, afat rachum. Mahu chanun, afat chanun. The same thing when it comes to gerim. When just like Hashem was makarev of Ramavinu before he became a ger, but because he saw he was so sincere, he helped him. Same thing as we have a chiv. When a ger, when a person comes and wants to become a ger, we have to help him. The way you know to help him is by trying to explain to him how hard it is to become a ger because we want to see it sincere, but not has to to push him away. So I want now, to pick up on these points as well. Yeah. Though, just tuning in, we're yeah. looking at the case of Aliyah Hawila. He is a Lebanese man who married a Syrian young lady. And after the wedding, they discovered he wasn't Jewish. But now we've discovered that he actually is Jewish. And he went through a gear. He went to a gear. He went through a conversion just to be on the safe side. Our guests helped guide him and helped in the conversion process. Rabbi Avram Reich is the Rav of Kehilas. Had Solas Yisrael. He's been involved in Kir for over 50 years. He's, a, he's composed and written Svarm. When we come back, we're going to continue to take, we're going to take some of your questions as well. 212-769-1925. Our number is 212-769-1925. You want to email. Email is a wonderful way to have your questions answered. Zevbrenner at gmail.com. Zevbrenner at gmail.com. Again, our number is at 212-769-1925. This is Get garnered interest around the world. The last time uh, we had him on, uh, we had actually had close to 80,000 downloads from the interview. So I know it's something which everybody has an interest in. 212 769 1925 or zevbrenner at gmail.com. We're going to be right back. Don't go away. Stay tuned. Talk Line Network Radio, America's longest running Jewish broadcast network. The voice of the Jewish community. You're listening to Talk Line with Zev Brenner, America's premier Jewish broadcast on the air since 1981. And now, here's your host. And we're back. We continue our conversation. Um, this is Ilya Hawila, who's uh, been called the Lebanese Hassan. Um, just want to let everybody know I was scheduled to be on with Zev Brenner tonight to take questions and answers about my Jewish status. Um, and I want to let everybody know that I am a full fledged Jew with my mother and my grandmother being Jewish. And I, I but I had to go through a Giyur Lahumra, nevertheless. Um, there's a video going on around besmirching my reputation. And I do plan to come on the air with Zev Brenner to discuss this in greater detail at a future date. But for the time being, I am respecting my wife's uh, wish, who uh, requested that I do not appear tonight with Zev to engage in back and forth dialogue with listeners. So I'm deferring to her wish, to her wishes, and I, I unfortunately won't be able to address them on this program tonight. However, my rabbi Avraham Reich, the rabbi of Kehilat Hatzalat Israel, was part of my Giyur Hamra and helped guide me through this difficult time and you know all my in my you know in my life is gracious enough to be on the radio tonight with Zev Renner answering questions and describing in detail what I've gone through and how my status got confirmed. So please accept my apologies for not being able to join the conversation tonight, but I do look forward to doing so at a later time and in a later date. Thank you all for understanding and Shavua Tov again. Uh, 
Okay, uh, where our special guest is Rav Avram Reich, the Rav Gehila Satsolis Yisrael, founded approximately 40 years ago. He's involved in Kiev, bringing back Jews to Judaism, especially from Russia. And uh, he's also written books and Swarim. And uh, we're looking at Aliyah Hawila, as you just heard. Uh, he was supposed to be on the broadcast tonight, but in deference to his wife, he's not on the air. We hope to have him in a future show. Before we get to our phone calls, Rabbi Reich, he mentioned his wife halachically. Now, what happened was once the wedding took place and they discovered that the family discovered that he wasn't Jewish, they separated. They said they're not married. Halachically, if you determine, which your Bezdin did, that he is Jewish, and even they went through a gear kachomri, went through a conversion just to be on the safe side. So according to that, is he still married to, to the Syrian young lady? Uh, uh, let me just uh, first... Um... Uh, clarify that I was not in the Bezdin that did it. I, I was there when there with other two other of my Talmudim to witness the Geras. But you witnessed the, what happened. Well, you you witness from beginning to end. From beginning to end. <clears throat> uh, as I mentioned before, <clears throat> that uh, the Yichus that a Jew knows that he's a Jew, we don't have any documentation. My parents came from Auschwitz and they they. They didn't come with any identification. <clears throat> Through the generations, we, uh, we have known that we're Jews from our parents. This is what makes us Jews from our parents. Uh, since his mother and his grandmother told him that we're Jewish, that he was Jewish, halachically, we have to really accept the fact. However, as I mentioned before, for those who didn't hear, it has been accepted halachically when there is no observance of Judaism for, for um, four generations we go through a gear lechumera. We know that his great grandmother didn't practice Judaism, or great great grandmother. Right, right. With that, they, that's that's very simple. They they admit that his grandmother admitted it because uh, now when uh, because uh, because of the fact that they were together with the goyim, or his great grandmother married a goy, and uh, so she was she she couldn't practice it. Uh, she may she married a Muslim, so she couldn't practice it. We have that very often, very often in a case, for instance where a person comes and says, uh, my, my mother is Jewish. My mother told me we're Jews and she doesn't even have a Jewish name. And, and uh, uh, that doesn't mean that she's not, he's not Jewish. So it means that she, in order for her to keep her employment by the communists, she could not she had to change her name. But we know that at least that just- So I want to get to the point where we have a lot of people waiting to speak. Yeah, yeah right. So, halakhically. Halakhically, there's, we have to accept- we, he, They're married? He, Halakhically, we have to go to Chumran to say that they're married, yes. So if they don't stay together... She must have a get, no question about it. A, 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 a get to Chumran. Get to Chumran. Right. Why get to Chumran? Uh, you know, because if, if, since I said we, there are four generations where, um, where there's no Yiddishkeit, mm -hmm. we, we, we question about the whole, uh, the whole Yiddishkeit. Not that he's not a Yid, but for many reasons, uh, the Chachamim said we should go through a gear of the Chumra. So over here, even though halachically it's very possible that he is a Yid, uh, we, so therefore we have to have a we have to have a get uh, in order to make sure that she we we um, we do the responsibility that we have to let a, a woman marry another man. Are you allowed to? Are you allowed to tell us who the Bezdin is that converted him? Um, uh, I'll I'll tell you the truth. The Bezdin. Uh, which is very, very hush of a Bezdin. It's not a Bezdin from today, the Bezdin for many, many years, and the elderly Dayanim have a lot of experience in this. Um, they heard about the whole roughness that this community is making against him, and they said it's not necessary for anybody to know who did it. Uh, Mertz Hashem, it will come a time where we'll give him, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to tell them who we are. But right now, since there's so much politics going around, they rather keep it, uh, you know, uh, uh, covered. And I understood them very, very well. No, I understand, understand because the Syrian community is not happy about the situation, I'm sure. Have you reached out to the Syrian Jewish community? I've tried to reach uh, out to the heads of the Syrian communities, the rabbis. I've texted them and I said, I, matter of fact, I, I texted one of the main rabbis there and I said, I, my, my name is Avram Reich and I would like to have guidance from you. I, was, I didn't call up, you know, to, to argue. I'd like to have guidance, and they refused to call me to call me back. And I also sent a shliach, one of the rabbanim of the, of the 
uh, one of the younger rabbanim in the Syrian community uh, to one of the heads of the Kazuki community, and he refused. He refused to uh, talk to me about it. So this is the, but, this but is the situation. The problem is if we get to our phone calls, the problem yeah. is that what you have ruled and what the Bezin have ruled is yeah. that he's halakhically Jewish and he went right. to the Persian just to be on the safe side. So she would require a get if she doesn't stay with him. But of course, no question about it. No question about it. Converts anyway, but he's halakhically Jewish even without going through the garage. So according to them, he's not Jewish. She would not require a divorce. So that could create a halakhic problem. But we have a we have a rule sveikah by raisa lechumna. When we have a suffix in the in halacha in the Torah, we always go lechumna. We are, we're stringent and we give it. Yeah. But they, they can get back together and that would solve the problem. But if they don't, then... yeah, there's no question about it. Uh, now let me explain to you that in this dayonim, um, the the main rosh bezin held told me that he felt it should be gir lechumra. Um, I didn't, uh, it, as far as the other dayonim in this bezin, I don't know what they felt, but he said it should, he will make a gir l'chumrah when I, when he was explained what the situation was with him. And is this, would he be accepted in Israel? He went to the Holy Definitely, Land. definitely. Yeah, that's, a, that's exactly why um, he, uh, he was, uh, uh, he was guided to go to this bezin because he wanted to be something, a bezin that recognized all over the world. Okay, so we're going to take your phone calls in just a moment or so. So, um, do you think at some point they're going to t- able to say who they are, the Bezin? At one point, they for sure will say, but not now. I don't hear him. Okay, we're going to take some phone calls. You're on the whole okay, Let's go right now. Okay, we have a blazing work. Okay. Hello? Yes, so you're Hello. on the Where are you calling from? Jeff from Flatbush. Oh, right, home? Jeff, you've been waiting. Thank you, Jeff. Go ahead, Jeff. First of all, if I remember reading the Gemara, it says, if someone is unduly cruel, we are to check their yichis to see if they're descended from Avram Avinu. I think you know that one. These, the Serene community, by having these signs up in their shuls, very big and distinct, that says they don't accept converts, I think that's undue cruelty, and we should take, check, check the yichis of these Syrians to see if they are really Jewish, because that's the halacha and what it says to do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> By the way, the, the, let me just clarify for our audience: the Syrian Jewish community in 1935 enacted a ban, a takana, that would not accept any converts in their community because they had a problem in 1935 of Syrian men going off with non-Jewish women. They didn't want to get involved with. They would want to go through a conversion process. They took a very strict position, which they uphold to this very day. Uh, Zev, let... can I can I intervene with something? Okay. Um, yes. This saying that we do not accept any gerim is a halacha, which unfortunately is against Shulchan Aruch. Now, you'll ask me what should have been done. For instance, somebody comes to me, and I want to know, he says he wants to become a ger. And we want to know whether he's sincere or not. The first thing I do is I tell him he has to join a kehila, a live kehila, which has a rav, which has tefillot three times a day, which has shiurim, he has to join that kehila. And if after a year, the rabbi can, can confirm that this person is serious, he comes to all the shiurim and he learns Torah and he's getting closer and closer to halacha and to Torah and to Hashem, then we consider, uh, we consider being Megayer him. And that's, in my, my humble opinion, that's what should have been done in 1935. Not just to say, wipe out uh, Simon and Shulchan Aruch, the problem is that they wanted to take the easy way out. That's not that, that that's not what the Torah wants. The Torah wants us well, to accept Gerim. And what should have been done is an example like uh, something that we do, or make a different type of a way of 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 uh, and, uh, uh, finding out whether they're, they're sincere or not. I'm not just saying you can't do if you're a Syrian you can't join the, Jew, join the Jewish nation. You know, and I've spoken to many Rabbanim and Gedolim about this, and they agree with this. Okay, that first, your question. first of all, uh, first of all, Rabbi uh, Rabbi Avadi Yosef fought the Syrian community on this to his dying day. He was very makel on conversions. We have to know that he fought until his dying day on on this issue. And the reason they have this issue because in the 1930s, the Syrian community made it very hard for Syrian young men to get married. They they would they weren't allowed to get married until they were established in business. And then they would set up a 30-year-old uh, man with a 15-year-old 
girl, and it was very hard. Some of them wanted to get married, and they, uh, the Jewish community didn't want to get involved with a community that does things like that. And so they were they're going out with shikses. That's true. I'm but not that's sure not that today. Well, well no. why do you ask? Why do you have a, an, a rabbi onto the Syrian community, and you'll ask? By the way, we had one of the rabbis agree to come on this broadcast, and we set up a time, and then we stopped returning phone calls because obviously they decided that they, they didn't want to come back. We'd love, and I'll, and I'll put out this challenge. I think the Syrian Jewish community is an important one, and they do a lot of chesed, and they're an integral part of, of our community. But I would but love they, to have one of the chief, one of the rabbinim come on the air to discuss why the ban still is in effect and what it means on all different kinds of levels. You raised some interesting questions. I appreciate. Now, what that. if you had now one, one more thing? What if you had a community and they did all kinds of chesed and great things, but they ate pig? One mitzvah, well, they yeah, went yeah, yeah, they yeah, ate yeah, pig. You can't compare would you accept them? them? They wanted yes, to, you they can. Want, hold on, they wanted to preserve their community. The question is, is still relevant today. Whatever happened in 1935. The question is today, they've grown. It's different than it was then. A lot smaller. Godal said no, you can't do it. And they didn't listen to him. So if they don't listen to their own Godalim, then what kind of community is this? Well, you can listen. They have their own They have their own leadership. They have their own Godalim. I don't want to. A leadership. I don't want to. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We're not going to attack the community. I'm sure they've had discussions with their Godalim, with their leadership. This is what they've come up with. And there should be a dialogue because of what we just raised. But I appreciate your phone call. Let's go to Helene in New Jersey. Go ahead, Helene in New Jersey. Okay, I have a question. Uh, if I remember correctly, when he returned to his mother's house after this, quote, wedding, his mother threw him out? Rabbi, Rabbi Rachti, are you familiar with that? I, I, I Listen, I, I don't think that's a fair question. Um, we're talking about his... Is he a Jew or is he not a Jew? Not what his right. internal no, problem with no, his mother. I'd be very, I, I'm very concerned as to the reason that the girl didn't want him to speak. Listen, I can't. We can't speak for her. I mean, he was going to come on, and uh, I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure why. I, I can't. Tell I don't you know. Why. The whole story sounds hinky to me. I'm very sorry to say. Well, listen, let me, you raise the question, Rabbi Reich, I've heard from people too that they say, well, they're not sure, it doesn't sound 100% kosher. I know you did the vetting, but you're going to be getting those kinds of questions where people are going to say, hey, is this really valid because of the questions that have been raised? Is that question uh, to me? Yeah, that question is to you. What was, could you please crystallize the question? The thing raised is, is that they see he, he wanted to come on and his wife won't let him come on so but people saying that maybe this, what helene said this sounds a little sketchy that like what's really going on here well let me just make again uh, make it very very clear that we're talking about his identity of being a yid and his midois toy voice he's an our kehillah and he's always ready to help he's a life type he he um He's very, very serious in his Yiddishkeit. And as I said, even people from the, from the Syrian community who know him for many years say he's a, a great person as far as digdug be mitzvahs and a good, uh, and good midois toivis. I don't think it's right for us to go into their personal uh, uh, problems in the family if the mother accepted him or didn't accept him or why his wife didn't want him to go on. Now, I could understand it very well. She didn't want him to go on. She didn't want to have such a uh, presum. But that's, this is all irrelevant to the question over here. Is he a Yid or is he not a Yid? Anyway, th Helene, that answer your question? No. All right, but I'm very sorry. <laughs> all right, no problem. We appreciate, we appreciate your calling okay, in anyway. Well, thank you very much. Thank and you. Uh, Thank you. So uh, here, okay, we're going to read, get to some email questions as well. Uh, here's an email question by Ryan. Hi, I was wondering if you can ask about which specific community his ancestry is, which side of the family it's on, and how far back does it go about the maternal DNA test he uploaded on his YouTube? Well, um, if I, if I would uh, be knowledgeable exactly how it went, then I, would, I wouldn't uh, hesitate giving it to you. But it really doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make a difference. Nowhere in halacha does it say that you have to know what their names is and what cities they lived in. And, uh, and the, the messiahs that we have is if your parents telling you that you're Jewish, you are Jewish. You know, my mother told me I'm, she, she came from the camps. And my mother and father told me I'm Jewish. 
I didn't uh, ask them about the heritage and where the great grandmother came, great grandfather. It's interesting to know, but it has no bearing to whether he is a yid or not. Now, are you concerned with repercussions? Because the best in the court of Jewish law that did the uh, the the conversion, yeah. they don't want to identify them because they don't they're afraid of the ramifications of the Syrian Jewish community. Right. Are you not afraid of ramifications? Yeah. I'm, I'm afraid or not afraid. A right. has to be afraid. Has to be afraid of Hashem, not of people. Okay, <laughs> we're we speaking Rabbi Avram Reich. He's guided Aliyah Hawila, the what we call the Lebanese Hassan, who uh, married a Syrian young lady from Flatbush, or from Brooklyn. After the wedding, they discovered he wasn't Jewish, and now they've discovered he is Jewish. He know he went through a conversion just to be on the safe side. of Avram Reich has been guiding him. He's and. And Eliyah is the part of his community, which is Kehilas Hatzolus Yisrael in Brooklyn, New York. And um, what we're going to we're going to be back with some of your questions, some of your comments uh, here on this particular broadcast. Talk line with Zev Brenner, America's premier Jewish broadcast on the air since 1981. And now here's your host. Welcome back to the program, Mom Zev Brenner. We're continuing to look at the story of Aliyah Hawila, a fascinating story of a young man from Lebanon. He married a Syrian young lady, discovered the wedding that he wasn't Jewish. But no, that's not true. They discovered that he is Jewish, but he had to go through a conversion, a gear kechumra, just to be on the safe side. And uh, we're looking at the wall that it entails. Rabbi Avram Reich is with us. He's the rabbi of Aliyah. He also was witness to the conversion that took place. He's Rav of Kehilas at Solis Yisrael. He's worked in Kiev and also worked with Russian Jews over 40 years and helped in all different aspects of Yiddishkeit. Before we get to our phone calls, uh, Rabbi Reich, there was a tape, a videotape of, of um, Aliyah's Nikola Sally, where she's basically charging him when being deceptive and not telling the truth about her. Did you see the video or hear about it? Uh, I didn't have to hear the video. She told me that herself. What did she tell you? That, you know, he was deceptive to me. And what did you tell her? I told her that um, lying, being deceptive, depends what the, what is the purpose of being lying deceptive? A person uh, lying, the aver of lying is going against Ratzon Hashem. The person has to be truthful. But if the purpose the person uh, covered up was because he was afraid that people would attack him, that's not considered lying. You know, he did it for a purpose to, we, to, 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 to prevent people from attacking him. You know, I, told, I, I always say the story about the, uh, the mayor of a, a Swiss town it was on the border in the middle of the war, Second World War, that Jews used to escape and go into there. And they had, a, they had an agreement with the Nazis that if the person was a, a, rel, um, a citizen of the town, they wouldn't have to send them back. So there was, one, there was one route where many Jews were able to escape. And the only thing they had to have is the mayor uh, to testify that they were citizens. And his answer was, I never said a lie in my life. Now, when I ask you a question, if he, if he said they were citizens, is that lying? Go, well, you can say he is lying, but that's the Ratzon Hashem to say people. So we have to look, we, we have to look at, at the perspective. This person has a, as a, as a, a record of being Erluch, not only in, in our community, even in the community of the Syrians, who was always Erluch, he always kept his mitzvahs, and he covered up the problem that he had with his father because he, I'm not saying that he was right. I'm not saying that he was right. Uh, I'm not saying that, but we can understand that he didn't do it to decept anybody. And this is what I told her. And this is what I think everybody should realize. He's not a cheat. He's not a liar. Because the purpose of this was to get close to Hashem, not to take him away from Hashem. And was, did she accept it? Uh, I really don't know whether she accepted it or not. Uh, but, um, you know, this is all Menashemayim. I've told, I've, I've told uh, Elia that if it's Menashemayim, I don't hear you. So I don't hear you. Okay, we're going we're to take some phone in just a moment. So yeah. do you think they're going to get back together again? I told, I tell, I'll tell you what I tell Elia. 
If this is your zivik, she'll get back to you. Okay. So everything's been so Everything, or, everything orchestrated from Hashem. All of this tzaris. I just want to bring out another thing before you before I start taking. Time if it's if they're meant for each other, they'll get back together. Yeah. But, but I want to say I want to say another thing. It says in the Torah from what I was I didn't count, but thirty six times by after Masager. If anybody had a reason until now to attack him, watch out, because the Torah says well, he's a ger now. Holidays he went to Geris. Has for shown for a person to be mitzayim now. You're being mitzayim the shechina, because the Rabbanu Shalom says I have a special love. For Gerim and Chas Vishon, somebody now to go be Mitzayrim. I'm, I'm, and I'm saying this because of Abbas Yisrael. I don't want anybody Chas Vishon to suffer by going against the Torah. Plus, we have a lot of people waiting to speak to you. Let's go to Adilia in Queens. You have a question for our guest. Go ahead, Adilia. Yeah, hi. Uh, I have to just say, I'm, uh, I'm very disturbed at the way that you're making it. Like, Oh, he wanted to get close to Hashem, not at a girl's expense. Number one, um, I don't know why in America we don't do what the Rabbanut does in Israel. What they do is both parties, both the Hassan and Kala, have to bring a copy of the, the original Ksuba of their, of their mothers. So this way, uh, the Messiah Kedushin can see who, you know, who was, you know, who married off their parents and to make sure that it's all 100% legit and they are Jewish. You have to understand today, the whole situation of wanting to be a Jew, a lot of them are not even really Jewish. They want, and unfortunately we know, a lot of people know um, people wanted to get married and you know, to Jews. And so this way they use it, but they don't even follow halacha afterwards. So the truth is, we have to remain, you know, we have to remain loyal to what Hashem wanted. Um, and if you want to be very uh, saying that he wanted to be close to Hashem, well, let me tell you, if it would have been your daughter, you wouldn't want this. And it's not right to go and make a little, make it, you know, like, like belittle it. You know, it's like you have to understand. I'm let, in the interest of time, we have a lot of people waiting. I'm going to let uh, the rabbi respond to you. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, the Rabbanut in Israel has uh, chumras that they enacted, and I'm not going to go and speak about the chumras that they make, but um, if we would have that prerequisite that a person has to bring um, a ksuba from his mother and father, uh, then I never, no, I wouldn't be a Jew. Mother. Let me Let me finish. Let, let me fi excuse me. I gave you time to answer. Let, let me finish. If, if, we would if they would enact that now, when my mother and father came from Auschwitz, I would be a guy because they didn't have that certificate. And if the Rabbanut would hear, I would never be able to get married. So even though I'm not going to criticize the Rabbanut, but there's no basis in halacha for something like that. The basis for halacha is like it says in the Paiskim, if a person's parents tell him, mother or father tell him that you're Jewish, that's the basis of a person becoming Jewish. When a person comes into a shul and he goes, he goes to the Torah to ask Aliyah, they're only asking for a certificate of his uh, mother or father's uh, ksuba. All right, thank you for your phone call. Let's move on. Let's go to Rifki in Borough Park. Go ahead. Oh, I, I, I'm so, I agree with this woman that just called before, and I'm sorry to have to say that this Rav, let me say it respectfully, you're a bit of a troublemaker. Why, hold because on, why do you call him a troublemaker? Woman, because this, this um, the bride comes from a from Elocha home this um young man he was he could tell you anything there must be a way to today with computers and everything you could go online you could discover and in europe this rub he's trying to say he has no proof the rub has no proof that his parents were from go online go look in europe you'll see your ancestries you could find out well, hold on, but it's, it's, it's not only it's, the rub there's a best in here there's a prestigious Besden, which is accepted by the state of Israel, so you know that it has to pass muster. But an Arab woman says that she's Jewish, and the, and the Arab grandmother says she's Jewish. I, I, I'm sorry to have to say this, but I, you know, my cleaning lady tells me she's Jewish, you know? Well, I hold on, hold on, Rifka, but I'm going to let the rabbi respond to you, but an Arab woman but, in Lebanon to say she's Jewish is a big thing, because it's not the typical thing that, you, that you'd want people, your neighbors to know in Lebanon. But but 
wait a minute, but this they were the children weren't born kahalacha. They weren't born according to the dinim, so they're not exactly Jew- Jewish. I'll let Rabbi Rack respond were born, to you. They were born uh, like Mamzerim. Why were they born Mamzerim? But I'll let Rabbi Rack respond because, to you. Because, uh, I, I, I don't want to be graphic, but uh, the women didn't go to Mikvah. They weren't born like like from people are supposed to be born. And this girl, this poor girl, comes from a, a very from family. It's a from Syrian family. She went to seminary. She, it's, it's, and he lied to her. You cannot start a marriage like this. This is ridiculous. You, you can't be happily married to somebody that deceit, deceited you like this. It's a pure deceitfulness. Rabbi Reich, go ahead. Now how could this be a happy marriage? Rifka, you raised some but, interesting but, questions. But I'm the rabbi let... is a troublemaker because... Why did don't call him a troublemaker? Just say you, you don't like what he did, but don't call him a troublemaker. Be to, respectful. That he has to... That this uh, uh, chassid is the one that has to initiate the get, as far as I'm thinking, right? So you're going to have a whole problem that you'll become an aguna now. Is that what's going to happen now? Rabbi Reich. Uh, you know, you're talking out of emotion. Uh, evidently, you didn't hear my statement at the beginning from, you just must probably just got in. So you're no, talking I'm emotional. Kidding. Please please let me finish. I'll let you finish. Now let me finish. You're talking out of emotion, which has no shaykhs whatsoever with halacha. No shaykhs with halacha. And I'm telling you again now, you're talking about a ger tzedek, which 36 times in the title it says, we have to miss a ger. Okay. You better, you better, you better, you better, I'll let you, you respond. Be very careful. I'll let you respond. Let, let's first have Rabbi Rack respond to you. Let's have I, a conversation. Rabbi, you now I curse people. Hold I on, hold on. Rifki, Rifki, one second. I'll let you respond. I'll give you a chance, but let Rabbi Rack finish this thought. Yeah. Go ahead, Rabbi Rack. I don't have anything else to say because all she is basing her, her complaints is on emotion. As, with everything that she said, it's contrary to Allah. She doesn't like to talk. Everything, everything that she says, everything that you're saying is contrary to Allah. It doesn't make a difference if a person uh, regarding uh, his Judaism, whether they went to the mikvah or they didn't make to the mikvah, or how religious they were. The question is, is he a Jew or is he not a Jew? And you're just basing everything on your on your emotion. Leave it to the rabbis to, uh, to, uh, um, to no, decide. No from person that has a daughter would want the daughter married to such a... a, a you're, again, you're talking out of emotion. You're as, not talking out of facts. As Erlach as he you're, is... You're just talking out of emotion. Beautifully, he died. The halacha doesn't go according but to emotion. Halacha goes to halacha. So, hold up, so is what upset you the fact that, that he was deceptive to her? Is that what's bothering uh, you? A hundred percent. This is a horrible so thing. Let, so let me, let me ask you, Robert, what Rifki is really saying is... Yeah. Let's assume that he's now halakhically Jewish, but right. when you have a marriage, it's supposed to be based on trust. And That's since right. and since the marriage began in this manner, is there hope for this kind of marriage if it began on deception, where 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 he told different things that didn't stem until later on? It turned out that way, but he it wasn't that way in the beginning. As I mentioned before, a mother of one of the rabbis in the Syrian community called me and told me that she knows him for many years, Elia, and he's been very sincere in Yiddish guy. Oh, whether, yeah. it was de- whether it was deceptive or not, the truth of the matter is that he's a Yid, and he's very Erlich, and what exactly, why he did it, and how he did it, right now, it's up to the, his wife to say whether he's, she's going to be Michael for that, whether she understands why he did it, not to, the purpose of it is not to decept him, because he's a very Erlich person, as anybody who knows him for years will say. I have nothing more to say to this woman. And Rabbi, uh, if, 30 if, seconds. You have other let questions. me ask you, and if you say, and if this young woman absolutely doesn't want to stay with this man, right. so what happens now? He has to give a get. How, how does the get come about? He has to give a get. That's all. I told, to, I, I, told him, I told him this. I told him. I told him. I told him. He would, yeah, have, to he would have to give a get. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Absolutely. He, he's ready. So he's ready to give it if she refuses to. So Listen, you, again, again, you're working, you're you talking out of emotion, not out of fact. He, he, you're talking out of emotion and not of fact. He is ready to give a get. If she decides, and we see your decision is not to go back to him, he's ready to give her a get. Okay. All right, Tony, thank you for your phone. We pray we're really, really uh, interested. Let's go to, let's go to David 
in Brooklyn. David in Brooklyn, you have a question for our or quite comment for our guest. Go ahead, David in Brooklyn. Yeah, I know it's Daniel, but uh, Daniel, I'm but sorry, yeah, Daniel. First, yeah, no, not a problem. First of all, get involved. Um, secondly, this is someone who personally knows Aliyah. I actually only got to know him after the whole controversy. Essentially, what happened was that I have a coworker. I work at um, you know, a, one of the local Brooklyn's from special needs organizations and and what someone who worked with me um actually was his roommate for for a few months you know unbeknownst to him with you know before the story broke out and um so we were like schmoozing you know about this thing it was like the the shabbos we were there at the agency together and he was kind of, and we were saying how crazy it is and he was telling me by the way he was on zev brenner this was after the first time right he said you you know I, i'll send you the link you should listen to it i think it'll it'll make you think a little bit differently about the situation. So I basically did. And then I asked him for his contact. I said, you know, I feel like a composer, like I really want to get involved. And then uh, the kids are, he sent it to me and I was going, you know, and ever since then it's history, I was very involved with a lot of behind the scenes, which for some pri for privacy reasons on the relevant parties, and I'd rather not get too into that. But um, but that's just the background on my end. Now um, I want to bring up two points. One Perfect, was we have other people what, waiting. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Just I'll try to be very quick. The first thing is just what they said about the Syrian community. Just in their defense, it's not actually us there to like open the door for gayers. That that's basically what the ban is. Not saying halakhically it's not okay. It's the community won't open the doors and this has precedent the Gemara says for example that you know like in, in the time of David they didn't allow people to convert because they you know they only converted out of Yira you know they're out of fear and by Shlomo they only they only joined they only joined because of the wealth and prosperity and they said this man Mashiach they won't they won't accept Gerim because you know people will do it for for you know for the all the glory so that you're saying we're in a messianic so, age, so therefore they won't accept Gerim. No, 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 no. I, I won't. We're not. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe with uh with. with I'm going to let Rabbi. I'm going to let Rabbi Rack respond because we're we're pressed by the clock. I'll let Rabbi Rack respond to you. Yeah. Uh, um, first of all. Um, Whatever happened in the times of David and uh, that's happened uh, almost uh, 2,000 years ago. Uh, we're, we're not in the Madrega of David and Melech to say who should come, who should not come. Number one. Number two, evidently you didn't hear uh, the, uh, my uh, explanation of how we're supposed to be Megayar again at the beginning. You just came in, evidently. Uh, and I explained that anybody comes to us for a Geris, and we, by the way, we do it with Shem Mitzvah. The first thing we do is we send them to a Kehillah. Any killer that he wants to choose, that's a, where there's a rav and he's there for a complete year. And when the rav says that he uh, that he's um, participating in all the tefillahs and the davening and learning Torah, and he's sincere, that's when we accept him. He just don't accept him from the street. So uh, thank you for your phone call. Yeah. We appreciate wait, wait. it. Okay, and uh, we're going to have to just uh, take a break right now. Um, with Zev Brenner, America's premier Jewish broadcast on the air since 1981. And now, here's your host. Shavua Tov Lekolam Israel. Um, this is Ilya Hawila, who's uh, been called the Lebanese Hassan. Um, just want to let everybody know I was scheduled to be on with Zev Brenner tonight to take questions and answers about my Jewish status. Um, and I want to let everybody know that I'm a full fledged Jew with my mother and my grandmother being Jewish, and I, I, but I had to go through a giyur l'chumra nevertheless. Um, there's a video going on around besmirching my reputation, and I do plan to come on the air with Zev Renner to discuss this in greater detail at a future date, but for the time being, I am respecting my wife's uh, wish, who uh, requested that I do not appear tonight with Zev to engage in back and forth dialogue with listeners, so I'm deferring to her wish, to her wishes, and I, I unfortunately won't be able to address them on this program tonight. However, my rabbi, Avraham Reich, the rabbi of Kehilat Hatzalat Israel, was part of my giyur l'humra and helped guide me through this difficult time and you know, all my, in my, you know, in my life, is gracious enough to be on the radio tonight with Zev Renner. 
answering questions and describing in detail what I've gone through and how my status got confirmed. So please accept my apologies for not being able to join the conversation tonight, but I do look forward to doing so at a later time and a later date. Thank you all for understanding and Shavua Tov again. Okay, as you heard, Rabbi Avonbrach is our guest. Our final stretch. Let's go to Lower East Side of Manhattan. Shlomo, you have a question for our guest. Go ahead. Just for, uh, an initial question, then after Rabbi Reich, was he one year together with you in your synagogue? No. Hello. No. He's... No, he was not. Well, you had a standard of one year. That's when I. That's when I am a guyer. But, oh. but if we have edus that a person has been years in the kihila keeping Torah and mitzvahs, I don't torture him for another year. And well, he has you know wit. You let, you're not letting me finish. You're not letting me finish. Well, let's be respectful. Go ahead. Go ahead, Rabbi. Go uh, ahead, Rabbi. The Bezdin who was Megayer him considered all the facts of his Yiddishkeit, uh, about the, his track record of keeping Yiddishkeit, so it wasn't necessary to have him have another year. I'm talking about somebody who comes to me cold, he says, Rabbi Reich, could you be Megayaras? I say, first thing is, I have to find out about his background. And if he does not have a background, you tell him he has to join the Kehila for over a year. Let me explain this to Shlami. What Rabbi Reich, he was a witness to the conversion. He didn't actually do the conversion. Yes. It was a Besden of three, and he and his students witnessed it. So they actually saw it, but they, would, they were not the actual Besden itself, the court of Jewish law. Well, let me just tell one quick thing. When, when, Yet, when Yeter became Yitro, it was not 613. It's, Yitro is 616. It's not simply mitzvah. 613 plus 3 by Shonim Gomli Hasodim and Rahmanut, which this man did not possess what he did to that family and that and that woman. Those are necessary components. They look at the halachic thing. He puts on fill and he does it three times a day. He studies Torah. Gom Rahmanus Gomli Hasodim. And evidently, evidently, okay. ev evidently, evidently going to respond. We're almost out of okay. Uh, okay. Right. Evidently, you just came on the on the on the on the show. This no, man has a, excuse me, I, I gave you a chance to speak. Now let me speak. Finish. Go ahead. Yeah, evidently you did not come at the beginning of the, uh, of the, uh, uh, of our uh, interview. He said he heard the whole thing. Anyway, go ahead, Robert. Right. Well, well, if he heard it, then he's denying himself what I said. And I said that he is, a, a, he's been testified by people that know him for years, that he's a Balchesed. And I can say in our Kehillah also, he is a Balchesed, always trying to go and help in going with Hasadim. So, that uh, that uh, 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 objection that you have is null and void. One yeah, quick question: Are you willing seconds. to have him do a a, 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 a a lie detector test if he spoke to his mother and grandmother and prepped them? Are you willing to do that? I, I spoke. I spoke to his grand. I spoke to his mother. I spoke to her himself. I spoke to her. See, so, evidently, I know you spoke. But yeah. Prep them. It's a possibility. How do you know he? How do you, how do you know he prepped them? I don't know if he did. It's a possibility. But you said he prepped. No. Let him take a lie Listen, you know, when you become when you become a dying and and, and, and Garris, then you'll understand this a little better. But evidently you're not you're ignorant of what a, what a, what a Bezin does. So have a good good to vote okay, you. Now you're free your phone. We're almost out of time. I'm going to read a quick question. Uh, Sarah writes, Good vote. Please tell the rabbi a lie is a lie, whichever way you slice it. Well, evidently she didn't listen to what I said at the beginning. Lies means when you go against when you're trying to say it to deceive people. He did not do it to deceive people. He did it because he was afraid if they would find out that his father was a guy, it would make just trouble to him. He was wrong, but he didn't. The purpose was not to deceive people. And evidently, you also didn't listen to the beginning or the middle of the of the uh, of the uh, interview when I, when I explained exactly what a lie means, what a lie doesn't mean. Have a good tevach. Anyway, Rabbi Avram Reich, uh, the Rav of Kehila Satolos Yisrael, which was founded approximately 40 years ago. He is very much involved in Kira, bringing people back to Judaism and conversions. He works especially with Jews from Russia, but he is here to discuss Aliyah Hawila, who was a, a young man from Lebanon who married a Syrian young lady. Turned he turned out he wasn't Jewish. Now he is Jewish. He, he went through a year kahumra. We went through a conversion process, even though his mother and grandmother are Jewish. We appreciate you being here with us. Look forward to having you back again. Certainly, this is as you can see, it gets a lot of passion. People are certainly very interested in the story. So we thank you for being on the air with us. 
Thank you for having me on. Good to talk to you. And one for thirty seconds. What What's the next step? The next step is uh, that uh, Eli has to daven to Hashem and ask for rachmim and chesadim. That if this is his zivuk, she should want to come back to him. And I told Elia, you cannot go against Hashgach Elyona. If Hashem wants her to come back to you, she'll come back. Are you, gonna, not, are you going to cancel his wife as well? Um, if she if she wishes, why not? I can't. I try to help anybody that calls me, and uh, you know. But there's going to be a certain time span, and we see, uh, you know, we see that she doesn't want to. Then uh, it's accepted that we have to give her a get if she doesn't want to. But we all hope. And what is that time uh, span? I really the Kabbalah that I had for my Rebbe is a year's time. A year's time. See, if, if it's a person, if if, the, if if we see that the other spouse does not want to even talk about it, if there a year's time. Uh, you should finally decide. But in less than a year's time, you have to let things settle down, you know, um, anger settle down, and people come to realization. Anyway, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me.